Hello, I'm Chris Wright from Cardiff Animation Festival team and back in August this year we recorded a fantastic Q&A with Welsh multidisciplinary artist Carl Legal, following on from his Marcus Garvey Draw Along workshop. We hope you enjoy the Q&A and if you want to check out any of the workshops that Carl has run so far, they're still on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Cardiff Animation. Enjoy. Um, Carl, do you want to talk a bit about, because you're doing a project aren't you for Black History Month, like celebrating different people on different days. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it's just, um, a calendar I'm doing. Hopefully uh, I could get my prototypes out by October. And it's basically a history month, a Black History Month uh, every day of the week. So I've got a, a, literally a, a, a black person that's um, saying an accomplished um, things. What can I say about it at the moment? Think people who have affected our lives in a, in a I don't know, in a grand way, but we, we're sort of not recognising them. So like it's obscure people from history as well as um, people we may already know. So we've got the Matters, the Kings and the obviously obvious, obvious ones, but I found some really uh, um, good obscure sort of um, cowboys, um, bare knuckle boxers, British, um, you know, from cricketers, I don't know, the people we know and the people we don't. So I, I, I've literally found that the first, uh, I think, like a drag queen, drag act, from uh, 19, uh, 1819, and he was a, a famous, like, a British like RuPaul. So it's just stuff I've been, yeah. and, uh, I've got like 35 left to go, and I just <laughs> have to find these people for the dates I need, but I'm hoping to get up by there. And next year, what I was thinking of doing is like on, from January 1st, is draw my first per person, and um, yeah, every day doing like an hour drawing. So like the, the end of that year, I've actually got a drawn calendar um, there, yeah, so constantly sort of trying to bring that up into speed. That'd be amazing. Do you feel like you get to know these people a bit more, like by drawing them, sort of thing? Definitely. I think like um, I, I don't know. It's it's hard to to draw somebody and not imagine what they're thinking or what they they say, <laughs> things like that. And I, I certainly drawing Marcus Garvey, I, I felt like how powerful he was, which I never would have ever sort of thought before, unless there was drawing his eyes, trying to get a stern sort of look. I sort of felt, ooh, he was a, he was a bad man, like doing his ad, I do, he had to, he had, mm. not, not that we know that he had purpose, I think I felt his drive is like, yeah. he's really sort of um, committed. And I don't know, these words are thrown out there, but that's what you feel when you sort of mm. drawing people, it sort of draws you in and makes you interested in then what they actually did. And uh, that's the same with my calendar, why I just want to spark off with names and date of births or wherever, but hopefully it give people, I suppose, uh, I suppose, I to go and have a look at their life and see what they've done. Like. Do you find it sort of easy to go from, because obviously I've seen you like, your really large paintings and sort of like likenesses. How do you find going from sort of like smaller to sort of like, much bigger sort of like scaling it up it's um i don't know it's a difficult one i i enjoy painting big i start my i don't know i always wanted to paint people's bedrooms and things like that i was given uh, sort of that leeway when i was younger and uh you know, I just do it but i like drawing small too so i used to draw like copy like, literally like a magazines that show little cd covers i just copy from them so like copying from my phone is uh like just typical for me but uh, yeah i suppose it's easier to draw small because it's quicker. So like when I used to draw my little sketches of what I was going to do bigger, I find drawing them bigger, I had too much space left in it, within it. So then I was able to sort of add my imagination and, and do more stuff within the big things. So that's why I like drawing big. But other than that, I think, um, yeah, it's easier to draw small. <laughs> drawing, drawing big things, I don't know. Because I do a spray can as well, I literally keep, treat the spray can like a pencil, so it's the same uh, drawing circles, and I, I go through the same process that way. There's no, there's no easy way around. Mm. Thing like, I don't do that. Is that the answer question? Now? Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I've never used spray paint, but <laughs> well, I, I think like uh, spray paint is such a quick way of uh, to get the result. Uh, go for it. Mm. It's a question, of course, but. Do you think that with drawing there is a, a place that you should start 
or does it not matter? Because you said you started off drawing, you know, your members of your family. Sure, um, right. you sorry? How do you mean, like start on the face or like? No, just in general, because I mean, um, um, I don't know about how easy it is to be encouraged or put off from drawing. So I wondered if there is a good place that people kind of can start drawing or whether it's just better just to go straight in and yeah, like whatever that, you yeah. like, you know. Yeah, there's no right or wrong ways. I think if people's inclined to draw, they're going to do it. Do mm. Drawing faces always seems harder. It's like I've, yeah. As I said, I was never good at drawing faces. Like it was something I just came with my sort of assistance of it. But doodling and things like that, I, I love. And um, just, yeah, I'm constantly making shapes out of something and whether it's throwing a piece of paper or whatever, I, I'm getting ideas from something. And I think like drawing is important for design because it's quick access to just like a, right. a, a drawing of an idea or anything, a shelf, blah, blah, you just do a little drawing or you can go into detail with it and do a massive piece of the drawing. So I think like, um, yeah, drawing is important to start off. I've seen in, in university uh, people who couldn't draw to, to save their life. They'd say that they're, they're not good artists, but they want to do computer animations. And I've seen them over the two years learn how to draw, literally mm. like, knowing how, not to draw, how to draw on a computer, but they needed to learn how to draw on a computer because that's what mm. it was. Mm. And stuff like that. And the way that, that the computer animation programs were built is all of spheres and shapes and cylinders. And that's how you learn to draw, like literally the arms, a cylinder, fingers, cylinders, and things like that. And I watched them literally become good artists within two years. And just like we drew, we drew every day, but it's something that anyone can actually do. I'm, I'm, I'm good at it. If they got the patience to sort of be prepared to be wrong and whatever. I know like uh, my brother's rips up his drawings because he don't like them. And I'm like, they're good. <laughs> we just, people got a different imagination and what they expected to sort of the results to be. And then don't go further because then they don't like the results. I think you've got to push past that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's absolutely it. And that's where you get style from. I think like uh, when you look at drawings and you see like a uh, simple, uh, simplified cartoon characters, and they just look cool, but they're drawn all wrong. Like, I don't know, anatomically, they're all mashed up and things like that. I think mm. that's style. So I, I constantly tell people like it's not about learning how to draw. It's like knowing what you're drawing is. Do you like it? Um, yeah, yeah. Quinton Blake, isn't it? All his, his drawings are kind of like yeah. a bit I mean, mad, but great at the same time, you know? I think like that's always on about using your imagination. Once you get it right, you can actually then sprout off within the drawing something that people couldn't get with a camera. Mm. Like, about, um, yeah, just using your imagination and making flamboyant lines or whatever, like, and uh, coming up with your own style. And that's what will make you enjoy your drawing as well, is that it's not, not hard, it shouldn't be hard. I think it should just sort of be a doodle. Yeah, yeah, enjoyable. Yeah, enjoyable. Brilliant. I was going to ask you, because you do like workshops and stuff, don't you? I was going to ask you if like, you have advice for people who come to a workshop or, or sort of end up there and they're like, but I can't draw sort of thing. Do you, have, do you have like stuff you say to people when they say, because I feel like a lot of people tell me they can't draw when I'm running a workshop and then it, like they do a really good drawing then sort of thing. Yeah, so, I what they do on, literally if, if we was at a workshop and we had to draw Marcus Garvey, I would literally say, follow me, copy every move when we start with a circle, a line down the centre of the face. And every drawing is, is the same one, even if I'm drawing up like a pot of flowers, I'll draw the pot, the shape of the flowers that they all extend to. I ain't counting no flowers, I ain't counting the, the stems. I want the shape and the bulk of the colour, so that's bright. Da, da, da. And you, you pick up these shapes, and it's the same, like, I think, with, um, with drawing faces. You, you look for the light down the centre or the side. And in certain tricks, I suppose, the more you, you draw. But, um, yeah, I would literally have made a class. Everybody face each other and draw each other, and they get self draw self-portraits and some cartoony or characters Troy, everyone can recognize who they are in the class and stuff like that. So that's mm. a good sort of exercise to do, just let people draw. And the same with the like, um, graffiti workshops. I just make people write their name as fast as they can uh, because it's rough and they come in. 
and uh, we just then elaborate the lines and make all the flow of a sort of like say uh, the speed I suppose that we want out of what graffiti sort of represents comes within a, a signature. And it's, I suppose I teach him now is to just be fast and as free flowing as possible. I want to do like this uh, uh, an idea for the bare buck, uh, bare knuckle fighting boxing that used to go on in the 1800s in Britain. Mm. And then uh, a character, I can't think of his name off the top of my head, something Richards, Bob Richards or something like that. But um, he taught, I don't know, he was, he was teaching everybody in high society in London back in the 1800s. And yet he turns out to be like LL Cool J's great, 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 great grand. Oh, wow. <laughs> I was thinking of doing an animation of him. And uh, Brilliant. there's not much information on him, but yeah, maybe draw something that someone like him. That there's only a drawing existing of him in the first place. Is there a drawing of him? Yeah. There is? Okay. He was massive in Britain, so like there's a couple of drawings of him there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see. It's also a, a, a cowboy I want to do, and he, he would have been the original Lone Ranger. And uh, there's an actual bit, some boss now, I don't know. But yeah, there's, there's a couple of people we could actually do cartoon characters of, and there's only drawings or uh, one photograph of them in existence sort of thing. Okay, okay. Oh, it's quite nice to bring, bring out these obscure kind of characters in history, because I don't know who the Lone Ranger is. I know there was a whole thing with black cowboys and you know, there's a lot of, uh, well, there's more stuff coming up about that kind of thing now, but no, I wouldn't have known the first bare knuckle fighter, no. <laughs> I, wouldn't have, I wouldn't even think to look for him, you know? I wonder who the first bare knuckle fighter was. I came to Britain and was teaching bit, uh, like a bit in the bare knuckle fighting ring, so wherever he won the first, but he was like one of the first, say like um, black athlete stars known around the world. It's right, sad. right. And they, uh, they killed him off in the end because they brought him out of retirement in the, when he was 40 to fight an Australian. And because he was beating the Australian, they, they hit him over the edge of a bar in the corner, in his corner. Yeah, yeah, I can believe that. So, nice. Get him out of the way. He's getting too popular, that one. <laughs> Have you got any other work? like coming up that you want to talk about Kyle? No, I can think of off the top of my head just I'm just summer season doing um, some t-shirts and some murals uh, hopefully um, get a development grant together for my rats and um, yeah see how it goes constantly try to invent something so brilliant brilliant